Thank you, Brian. I just wanted to start. Brian Cunningham, uh, now every year we can say it's an annual event, works around the clock to make sure uh, this is an important marker for the community and that we bring people together. So let's give Brian a round of applause. Thank you, Brian. Really appreciate it. So welcome to Newcastle County Government Center. I'm honored to be here today. It's a bit of a somber day, uh, of course, because of what's going on on the other side of the world, uh, tragedy in Afghanistan. And also because this is a day uh, where, thanks to Penny Rogers, her leadership, uh, we're pausing to mark those we've lost uh, in the struggle, the disease of substance use, so many friends and, and family who we all know uh, who did not win their battle and hopefully have moved on to a greater and higher place. Um, but also a chance for us to recognize so many people coming together who are really working round the clock to make sure that there are those out there who do have a brighter day, that we take the lessons of those we've lost to make our community stronger, stronger, more loving, more caring for uh, each other. I want to make sure we recognize uh, certain heroes that I know who are working every day under my auspices in Newcastle County government. My predecessor, Tom Gordon, in collaboration with Colonel Elmer Settig, started something called a Hero Help Program. It was one of the only programs of its type in the country. It was volunteer-based to just do whatever we could uh, when our, our police were out and saw those struggling with addiction, we could do whatever we could to divert them into treatment rather than incarceration. Under the leadership of Colonel Bond, um, that hero help has taken off, uh, been funded like never before, and now we've formed an incredible partnership with Christiana Care. And I just want uh, Lieutenant Herring um, and everyone on the Hero Help team, Dan Moss, Tori, everybody, could you just stand up so we can give you a round of applause? Thank you for what you're doing, literally on the front lines every morning, afternoon, and night to make sure people are kept safe. Tori knows I was at uh, Lyman House last Sunday night. I have a friend, George Meldrum, who I think is on the board of Lyman House, and I go have dinner with my parents every Sunday night and to keep healthy. It's not a short trip, but I've been starting to walk to my parents' house. And on Sunday night, I, I saw uh, George Meldrum carrying seven pizzas. George is in his 70s. And to see a guy struggling to carry seven pizzas out of a pizza shop, I just sort of said, hi, you need help getting to your car? He said, no, he's OK. And I went on my way. The following Sunday night, I saw him again with seven pizzas outside the same restaurant. I said, George, you're awful hungry every night, aren't you? And he explained that every Sunday night at Lyman House, they have uh, a budget every week for food for the the gentleman in the gentleman's house the, the guys that live there i think it's about 15 guys and they were finding that that by wednesday thursday the food that they bought for you know every monday would run out by wednesday thursday and so they increased the budget and the food would still run out by wednesday thursday and they increased it again the food would run out by wednesday thursday i said you know that's the same thing that happened with me and my buddies after college i think we just eat eat a lot and you just eat more and so what they've done is they get volunteers to provide dinner uh, on Sunday night so they can carry over to Monday. So I was there on Sunday night. I went and, uh, you know, sponsored pizza one night. And so I asked some of the guys, you know, how did you get here? What's your story? And one by one, they really saluted so many of you. They mentioned our Hero Help program and so many of you who are on the front lines, literally saving lives. I know you don't often hear it directly sometimes you do, um, and I know in this business there's a temptation to just focus on the, the worst of the worst, the hardest cases that I know are keeping you up at night. But I wanted to just take a moment and say that I personally, last weekend, heard of the tremendous heart-wrenching stories that end with beautiful successes. So thank you so much uh, for what you're doing. I also want to mention Hero Help won the Compassionate Champion Award from the governor this year, which is not an easy award to win, and I love the name Compassionate Champion. We're also joined by Chief Mark Logeman of our paramedics, who again, like our police, are almost always on the, the first responders, who are the first in line 
to literally save life and hopefully work with you, so many of you, to channel those most in need into effective uh, and long-term treatment. Uh, I could spend a lot of time highlighting everyone here, but we're really here uh, because Penny Rogers came to us and said, we need to do this. Um, Penny reached out to us last year with the idea. Last year, of course, was a particularly heart-wrenching year. And in fact, I'll announce today that we in Newcastle County are about to launch a study, an exhaustive study where we're in the process of hiring a firm, an outside firm, to look at substance use disorder in our county, to look at what's changed in recent years through the pandemic and how can we most effectively organize our response going forward. It's no secret that we have federal funding. We have funding like never before. So many of you, when you came to me two and three years ago, I'd be like, that's a great idea. We don't have the money to do it. Now the truth is that we have the money to do it. We're only limited by our own capacity to think creatively and to execute on good ideas. And so we're bringing in an outside firm to take an unbiased look at the work you're all doing and we're all doing together to identify where are the gaps and how do we move things forward so that so many families across our community can end up with greater outcomes. So without further ado, I wanted to bring Penny up here, recognize her husband, Bill, face the facts, the tremendous work that you're doing, and I want to make sure we hear from you directly. So Penny, come on up. Good morning. My name is Penny Rogers. I'm the executive director of Face the Facts. Today, standing here is a bittersweet moment for me. Sorry. The death of my 23-year-old son, Vincent, to a heroin overdose in July of 2017 has led me on this journey. And while I know he is not here physically with us today, I know he is with us here in spirit. In his eulogy, one of the things I said was that his life would never be in vain. So here I stand in front of people that I have the grace to be able to do events with, to be able to pick up the phone and call, who are the angels that walk among my life, who carry me on days that I cannot be carried. This last year, Face the Facts expanded very proudly to all three counties. Our focus next year will be to hold one of these events in each county, which leads me to thank Matt Myers and Brian for making today seamless. What happened was last year during quarantine, I took this on as a project. Matt responded to a Facebook message and the rest is history. It shows me Matt's commitment to moments like this. This is not going to cure the disease of addiction, but this is going to give people who don't really understand that addiction is a disease, a moment to pause and God willing educate themselves. The lowering of the flags today is a symbol of his commitment to breaking the stigma and bringing to light a disease that is killing two Delawareans every single day. While we know Delaware has a tremendous amount of work to do, we must stop and celebrate moments like this. I'm beyond blessed to work in the addiction community with so many people that are here today that I sometimes forget the stigma of addiction is alive and ugly. We sometimes are in our own cocoon and we forget that people still use the word junkie, that they still talk about Darwinism and all the other ugly things we read about on social media. Steps like today begin to chip away those misconceptions and they hope, hopefully are bringing forth a moment for people that will stop and realize that behind every death is someone's son, their daughter, their mom, their dad. Next year we will be celebrating the passing of House Resolution 
2349 by the White House, we will see all of the flags in this nation lowered, not just the state of Delaware. I'd like to thank the leaders of the addiction community here today. Without these ladies and gentlemen in the trenches each day, I'm not sure what we would do. I'd like to go around and personally thank everyone, starting with Doug Sauter, who probably was one of my earliest connections to the addiction community. Doug has done more things than I can even begin to stand here and talk about, which leads me to his son, David, who started an amazing group, Community Collaboration of Delaware, that does for everyone, not just the addiction community. They're supplying things to groups that we could stand here and talk about all day. In the front row, we have Ma Van from Hope on Deck, who yesterday executed and sponsored an outreach program in my son's name. When she put it out on Facebook, a softball group came forward and made 90 sandwiches, and inside of the envelope of each sandwich was a personal note. And for anybody who's never been to Kensington, to be able to stand there, hand it out, give those people a hug, and tell them that somebody really does give a shit about them is important. Dawn does it every single day. We have, a, we have a group text message that at the end of the day, some days it's 40 or 50 text messages about groups like Hero Help that need a pair of shoes or they need a winter coat. Dawn spends, she has a shed that's probably three times the size of that tent she will root through bags of clothes for hours to be able to find somebody a size 7 sneaker. Babita from Phoenix Shoes Clothing, who her organization feeds 100 homeless people three times a day, and that is the smallest thing her group does every single day. And Matt Anderson from Impact Life, who if you've never heard Matt share his story, take the time and meet this young man because he is the face of recovery. And behind him is Zach Bibb from Firm Foundation. I met Zach when he texted me four years ago to ask me if he could come and film me. And at that point he was a stranger. And I said, yep, come on over, come to my house. I don't know you, we'll take a video. Since that time, I have watched Firm Foundations go from Zach's thoughts to events that are one of the most attended in the state. Diana Rodriguez is the newest member of the Face the Facts team. She is the executive director of our Sussex County group. Next to her is Teresa Campbell. She is, she's the face of a lot of things, um, but I'm thankful that she is the face of Sussex County. Anybody who knows me knows that I will not drive across bridges. So when Teresa said, we need Face the Facts in Sussex County, I said, good luck with that. And she said, no, I'm gonna do it. And with that, she did. Um, so without people like Diana and Teresa, we wouldn't be able to hold meetings in the entire state of Delaware now. Next to her is um, Teresa Ran, who lost her daughter, Stephanie, in a murder in Kensington. She has gone on to start her own nonprofit, and she's one of the newest members of our village. And next to her is Mary Owens from Connections. Mary is an angel. I can't say enough things about her. She's not just an employee and a house manager of Connections. She loves those men and women like they were her own children which means that it's not just a job when you're working in the addiction field. Dan Moss, all the way in the back. Um, I didn't know who Dan was, and I brought him up in conversation, and my daughter told me that Dan is credited with saving her life. So sometimes when you look at the statistics for Hero Help, if you're the 4% that maybe your child was saved, Hero Help is more than I could ever stand up here and talk about. And next to him is Lieutenant Herring, 
who, for a police officer to answer my phone at 11 o'clock at night on a Wednesday night because a mom called me and found drugs in her home and didn't know how to dispose of them. And he offered, he was not working, he offered to drive and get them. That again shows it's just not about his paycheck. And Colonel Vaughn, thank you for doing what you do. The fact that you're present here with everybody else who really matters in the county police sends a tremendous message. So with that, I'm gonna plug my event tonight. Um, I hope to see everybody here, or everybody at Batting Park tonight from five to eight. We are hosting an overdose awareness and addiction night. Um, it's an opportunity for people to stand up and be able to say their loved one's name. Um, I'm very blessed because I have the opportunity to talk about Vincent in forums like this, but there are some parents and spouses and siblings that don't have the opportunity to be able to say their loved one's name even in their own homes. Um, the stigma is still real when it comes to death. People don't want to acknowledge that their loved one has been lost to an overdose or things related to addiction. So it's a, it's a bittersweet opportunity for those people. And again, I'd like to thank Newcastle County Executive Matt Meyer for giving me the opportunity to be surrounded by so many people in my life that I love, which leads me to my husband. Anybody who knows me knows that this is a whole lot going on every day. A whole lot. And that guy holds my pieces together every single day of my life, which is a tremendous job. So with that being said, let's lower the flags.